Speedometer charts, or gauge charts as they're also known, have a worse reputation in data visualization circles than the disdained pie chart. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to build Excel speedometer charts, because I know you're going to ask me anyway. Then I'll explain why they're bad and what to use instead. Excel speedometer charts actually consist of three charts, two donuts, and a pie. The color bands represent a qualitative scale. My qualitative scale for this example is generic, but they're typically aligned to performance. For example, red is poor, orange adequate, yellow good, and green excellent. And obviously you can modify that scale to suit your needs. The first donut with the colored bands is supported by its own table of data. So let's take a look at that. We'll delete this chart and you can see it here behind. Note that the qualitative bands add up to 100 and the omitted line is for the bottom half of the chart, which you don't see. And we'll cover more on that in a moment. So to create the chart, we simply select the data through to the omitted row. And then on the insert tab, we want under pie, a donut. Let's bring it up here closer to the data. Now I need to rotate the chart. So selecting the donut, control one to open the formatting pane. Let's bring it over closer. And I need to change the angle of the first slice to 270. That just puts the omitted piece on the bottom so that the top half represents our speedometer. Okay, let's move that across and we'll go ahead and insert the next chart. And that is the donut that contains the scale. Notice that the scale values also add up to 100 and that's for the top half. So to insert this chart, we're going to select the label right through to row 16. Control C to copy, select the outer edge of the chart, Control V to paste. Now you can see the scale is on the outer edge and my qualitative scale is the inner donut. Now I want to change the colors of the outer donut. So I'm going to go to chart design, change colors, and I want this monochromatic palette with the gray gradient going from light to dark. Applies it to the whole chart, that's fine. We're going to tidy that up in a moment. Next. I want to hide the bottom segments of each donut. So selecting it twice, so left clicking twice, not a double click, just two left clicks. With the first segment, I'm going to set it to no fill and then repeat for the second donut and no fill. Next, I can set the colors for my inner segments, for my qualitative scale. So let's go ahead and the first one is red and then we have orange, yellow, and lastly, green. Now, if you want to make the donut a bit thicker, we can go into the series options and change the whole size, perhaps to 50%. And while we're here, let's turn off the legend because it's redundant. Okay, we're ready to insert the needle chart and that's a pie chart. That's supported by this data here. Notice its total adds up to 200, which is actually the total values of the whole donuts. The actual is the position of my needle. The one is the thickness of my needle and the balance creates the complete pie. And you can see it's just a formula that subtracts the total less the actual and the needle thickness. So to insert my pie chart, I'm going to select the table and then copy it. Selecting the chart, Control V to paste. It inserts it as another donut. So with that selected, I'm going to right click and change the series chart type. And it's the last one here. We're going to make it a pie on the secondary axis. I'll click OK. Now let's select the pie. And we also need to rotate it. So it needs to be 270 for the first slice. And then we'll go back to formatting and we're going to set the border to no line. And then the big segments, we want to hide them. So let's select them one at a time, no fill and no fill. And then the tiny segment, if it's difficult to select, you can make the needle thickness bigger. So let's make it five. Then you can select that segment and go ahead and format it in black. And then we can go back and change the value to one. Next, I want to apply labels to my outer donut. So selecting that, and it might be difficult to select because the pie is sitting on top of it. So you can use control and your arrow keys to select the right chart. And then we're going to add data labels, but I want to go into more options because I don't want values of 10. I want this label scale here. 
So we're going to deselect lead lines and value and choose value from cells. And then in the dialog here, I can select the cells right through to the zero. Click OK. Now it places the labels on top of the donut. I actually need them and they're correct to be at the gaps between each segment. So you have to manually left click and drag them, unfortunately, one by one. So let me fast forward while I do that. And lastly, the zero needs to go up here. Now my chart still has a big border around it, which shows the size of the actual donut. It is a space hog. So selecting the outer edge, I'm going to go to formatting and set the outline to no outline and the shape fill to no fill. That's just going to allow you to position the donut closer to other charts and data. And for bonus points, we can insert a text box that's going to contain the value of the needle just to help our users interpret the data even more quickly. So selecting the outer edge of the text box in the formula bar, enter equals, and then select the value of the actual, press enter, and there it is. Let's center that in the text box, and we'll make it a bit bigger. We could make a bold. You might also like to add some text in there that tells us what this data represents, or you could give it a header. Let's also hide the fill and outline from that and we'll just move it down a little bit. Okay. And there you have a speedometer or a gauge chart. While speedometer charts require a load of fiddling about to create, the main issue data visualization experts have with them is that they take up a huge amount of space relative to the information they convey. Taking the chart in this example, it's reporting on a single value. It places that metric in the context of qualitative scale, which gives it perspective and it's visually easy to interpret, so that's good. However, when you're using these charts in a dashboard that's limited for space, they become expensive, plus all the extra embellishments like color, access labels, etc. add to the cognitive load. We can simplify this chart and still convey the same information in less space and reduce cognitive load with simple column charts and a marker. And unlike speedometer charts, column charts require very little work and data to create. So let's look at how we create this one. All you need to do is select the table, insert column chart, this one here, stacked column. Now it doesn't look like a stacked column chart at the moment. That's fine. Let's bring it up closer. I'm going to right click and select the data. And all I need to do is switch row and column. And now we have our stacked column chart. The top segment is our actual and that needs to be a line chart with marker. So we're going to right click, change series, chart type. It's the last one here and we want line with markers. Click OK. Now it's looking better. Let's delete the horizontal axis label and we'll resize it. Let's go in here, control one to format the axis. And here we just want the vertical axis maximum to be 100. And then I'll select the column. And in here, let's change the gap width to be zero. Now we get a better idea of how small it can get. All right, let's go ahead and set the fill color for these qualitative bands. So this one's red, orange, this one's yellow, and the top one is green. And now for the marker, this is a line chart, but because it only has one point, there's no line to draw. So we can set the marker to behave a bit more like a line by selecting this type here and making it wider until it spans the width of our column. Let's fix the color of the marker. So we'll set it to solid fill and I'll make it black. And I'll just take the border off it. All right, let's see how that looks. It could probably be slightly wider. So let's go and fix that. Make it 16. Select the chart border and we'll get rid of that. And lastly, let's add a data label for the marker. It pops it to the right. So let's just reposition it, make it bigger and drag it across. You can also make it bold font and easier to read. And that's it. Job done. Only one table of data. One very small chart that takes up far less space. There's less noise. It's quicker to interpret. You could also make it look more professional by toning down the colors to bring them in line with your dashboard's color theme. Don't feel that you need to stick with the generic traffic light approach. 
Next time your boss asks for a gauge chart or speedometer chart, show your data visualization expertise and try to convince them otherwise. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for the lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.